Hello everyone. This is my coding tutorial on PyTorch. When I switched to PyTorch from TensorFlow, I found it has a steeper learning curve. Compared with TensorFlow, you have to write more code to get it going. But because of that, it is easier to debug, and you will have full control over the model. Before we start coding, let's have a plan first. You have to remember one thing. PyTorch is not a complete framework, so you have to rely on another library to process the data. In this example, I will start with pandas and number pi, and only use PyTorch when we start building the neural network. There is no fit method, so you have to implement the pipeline on your own. In this example, I will use the standard train evaluate repeat approach. We will use the iris dataset from UCI machine learning repository. It is a commonly used dataset. It has 150 samples, four input features, and three output labels. From the UCI webpage, you can find more information about the attribute and the output labels. In our neural network, the model will only have one hidden layer. Since we have four input features, the number of input node is four, and three labels, so the output node is three. Usually, you want a larger hidden layer than the input layer. I choose six here, but any reasonable number is fine. For example, 12 or 16. But you don't want it too large to overfit the train set. We will use ReLU as the activation function for the hidden layer. In PyTorch, any linear layer will end a bias term by default. I will use the cross entropy loss function, so the softmax function for the output layer is not required. Basically, we don't need the neural network to compute the probability. You can find the full working code from the description. Um, I have a microphone right in front of me, so I'm expecting some typo. So um, before we start anything, I like to reset my random number seed. So every time when I run the script, I always has a same result. If Torch CUDA is available. In PyTorch, it actually uses two different um, random number generators. So one is from the GPU, another is from the CPU. So we need to reset both. And then we do the same thing to number pi. So, yep. so the first thing we do is uh, we load the CSV file comma separated file into panda data frame. Inside the CSV file, there's no header, so we better to give it a name. And then let's take a peek on the loaded data. So as you can see, the class is actually has a string type. We want to use a label encoding. Before we do that, let's take a look, see how many classes actually inside the data set. So, as you can see, it uh, indeed has three different labels. So, uh, 
class. So it's category, and then we use the encoding. Let's take a look on the header again. Yeah, as you may notice, so the first five columns seems all had the same label. So I'm assuming in the data set, the sequence is actually ordered by the labels. So before we do anything, we want to shuffle the data set. Let's get the number of sample first. I'm using control plus enter to run the cell without adding a new cell. So we have 150. Let's shuffle it. Shuffle indices mp random. And then there's a method called the permutation. And basically we pass all the sequence we want to permutate. Then the lock. So the I lock is a shorthand for index location. So um, right now we have all the um, samples shuffled. Um, as you may also notice, the S length has a larger scale than P wise. So before we pass it into the model, we want to do a rescaling. Pass the, the panda data frame into a number pi first. So we do it so. Since the first four columns are the, f the features, and then the last column is the label, so values. An S type. We want float thirty two. Let's not correct. And then for the label, we want int sixty four. Same thing. But then the index is next negative one values. Hi. So, um. We want in 64. So in Windows, if you type in mp.long, you actually have uh, int 32. So in this case, we want uh, explicit to define um, that our type is in 64. And then let's compute the mean. And then the span. So the span is the is the x max minus the x minimum. So I want to use axis um, equal to zero to get a array instead of a single value. So we could just take a look. Span. So basically we have four columns. Each column has a different mean value. Then let's give it a, let's write a function. Um, the re reason I'm writing a function is if I have a new um, testing sample, I could run this function to apply the same scaling to the new test sample. first five samples. So um, as you can see, it's basically zero mean, and then the range is roughly about negative one to positive one. Once you're happy with the data, let's split it into a test set and a train set. So let's compute the number of um, the number of samples in the train set and then the rest of the samples are the test set. I'm using the, um, 
I'm expecting the number of train set and the number of test set are integers. And uh, usually I do a 80-20 split, but in this time, because there's um, only 150 samples, so I like to have a slightly larger test set. In the ideal scenario, you want to do a cross-validation when you trying to train a model with a small sample size. So it will have the same indices and then test. So you can use the negative value to access the end of the array quite common practice in Python. I find it's quite handy. So let's print out the shape. Yep. So basically we have a 90-60 split. I'm happy with that. And then next part, we want to create a class for PyTorch dataset. So the number pi array can pass into the PyTorch as tensor. Plus np data set. So it's a number pi data set. And then override the class, which is data set. So there's a three method I want to implement. The first one, one plus the data and then the label. So what I usually do is uh, the second one is item. Let's basically get the atom, so I'm pass. Just make sure the length of data is same as the length of label. Otherwise, we are in big trouble. Then torch from number five. So basically, we return that uh, we return the features and the labels at the same time. So for the PyTorch to, to load the data, it actually require a class called the um, data loader. So data, the data loader help, the, um, help to load the data set into a small mini batch. But in this case, we want to load all the train data into one batch since they are small. X train. Y train test data set. And That's a typo. The first parameter is a data set. And then we need to define the batch size. So basically, in this case, because it only has 90 samples, so if we pass uh, 128 as a batch side, it will fetch the entire train set at once. Since there's only one batch, so we don't have to shuffle. Usually, you won't turn the shuffle on.
have the matching number of samples. Mm, quite happy with that. This is going to be too long for one video. Let's stop here and continue our journey on the next video. Thank you for watching.